Time now to talk both politics and policy. I'm joined by State Senator Joyce Elliott of Little Rock. She is the Democratic candidate for the 2nd Congressional District. It is always good to be with her. Joyce, thank you for being here. Let's begin with the fiscal session. Um, Democrats in the Arkansas legislature are wanting to postpone the uh, upper income tax cuts that uh, were passed in the last legislative session. Why and, um, and what are the chances of that passing? Well, one of the things we know as Democrats is that, and, and I would think Republicans will feel the same way, that we're at a point where everybody needs to be a part of the sacrifice. And we just think it makes common sense to uh, ask those who are the most well positioned, the, the upper uh, 1%, uh, to delay that tax cut. It's not, it's not as if we're asking to uh, delay it forever, but just until 2022. And you know, this kind of harkens back to FDR. During that time, uh, those who were the most well off uh, agreed to even take a dollar a year for their salary so that they could help the country. In this case, we're just asking uh, those folks to help the state. And we're not asking them to take a dollar a year by any stretch of the imagination, but we think when we're asking everybody to sacrifice, this is, some, this is the least that we can do. And uh, I don't know what the chances are necessarily, but I think that everybody would take that seriously. It, it did not, the resolution did not pass in the Senate, uh, but that's something that could be revisited and I think it should be. You pushed this past week too for no excuse absentee voting in November. Uh, that was defeated in the committee uh, vote there. Um, one of the arguments was that this could still be done at a later date or it could be done by the governor's executive order since it's not going to happen now, are you okay with those two choices? Uh, I'm not okay with those two choices, but they're certainly uh, better than nothing because the legislature had an opportunity to act and to carry out our responsibility. It seems to me it is not much to uh, put something in place to plan because we don't even know uh, if the COVID-19 won't uh, resurface again in November. Uh, and, and there are many uh, researchers and doctors, of course, who suggest that it might. But we don't think uh, anybody in this state should have to choose between uh, help their health and carrying out their right to vote. So this is a perfect way that's used, ar it's used around the country, other parts of the world. It's asking nothing more than if you want a ballot, you get a ballot absentee. Otherwise, all the other procedures stay in place. I was very disappointed that um, the, the measure didn't pass because right now we're in a waiting position where there's not certainty for folks at the county level who have to plan for our uh, elections and there's not certainty for our, our voters. We, we could have accomplished that. And traditionally we tend to say, we don't want to just put everything on the governor. We want to maintain our powers and do what we should do. And this time we didn't do that. But if ahead, uh, we have a special session and we can address it, if we can address it uh, via the governor doing something, I would appreciate that. But it needs to be done quickly because you can't just decide to make sure everybody has an absentee ballot. There has to be a lot of planning. You are campaigning for Congress virtually, I would presume. Um, tell me, what, uh, what are you hearing? What's your take on how the COVID-19 congressional relief package is being received? And what do you think still needs to be done? I, I just came from uh, the legislative session where there was a lot of discussion about the unemployment benefits in the uh, CARES uh, uh, Act package. And the things that need to be done, everybody has been uh, made aware of what's out there. And some of that is still not clear to people, but it's the operationalizing of the, of the CARE Act that seems to have the biggest snag right now. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, people are trying to sign up for unemployment benefits and they just can't, be, can't get through because you know, we are not equipped to, uh, to carry something that is this large. And, and there are folks who still don't have answers. For example, if you are part of the gig economy, you are the self-employed. At this point, uh, we don't have instructions on how people like that who have traditionally not been eligible for unemployment benefits, uh, how that process is gonna work. That was one of the questions I had this morning. And of course, I was told that's still being worked out. In the meantime, people are just waiting. Now, for some of the things that were not included in the package and that are being looked at in uh, part four, uh, funding for uh, states and counties, uh, states, cities, and counties, 
uh, was not at all what it should be. That's something that is being looked at. And uh, there's also uh, more funding for schools and higher ed that have been hit very hard. And I know that in some cases, um, there, there are, the people are looking at making sure we uh, think more clearly about how we are handling employees and employers. Like, do we want to think about maybe uh, making sure employers can pay their employees so they don't lose them in the process. Because when this is all said and done, we've got to find a way to come back. And the more of the infrastructure we can maintain, uh, that's going to make it a lot less difficult for the comeback. And that's something that's going to be looked at a great deal in part four. And we are looking forward to what that's going to be like. And uh, I'm often on. Um, uh, a conference calls where we're discussing these issues with people across the country, and that's very helpful. Your uh, general election rival, Congressman French Hill, is a co-sponsor of a bill that would uh, basically diversify the nation's medical supply chain to not make us as dependent on foreign manufacturers such as China. Uh, I want to get your take on whether or not you support that legislation. He told the Washington Examiner that America has been caught unprepared. It's not a Trump thing, it's a federal government thing. Do you support the legislation that uh, Congressman Hill is supporting on this? Well, I, I, I support the notion that we need to uh, make sure that we are prepared in our own country and we probably have outsourced too much. But uh, when you say it's a federal government issue, not a Trump issue, I mean, I think that's pretty cute maybe to suggest that uh, President Trump is not a part of the federal government. You know, last I looked, the president, no matter who it is, is the head of the federal government. And I, if, if President Trump would uh, spend more time being the president as opposed to making excuses, and I think if, if uh, Congressman Hill would take more time to hold him accountable, that would benefit both our, both our nation and our state because uh, we should not be looking at a time like this to find ways uh, to excuse the president from doing his job. We should not look for excuses for the federal government in general not to work. That is why we send somebody to Congress to represent us. Uh, Congressman Hill is that person that needs to hold the federal government, whether he includes the president or not, although I can't imagine how he could not, to, to help hold folks accountable to do what we need to do for the people of this country. All right, she is State Senator Joyce Elliott, Democratic candidate for the 2nd District of Congress. Thank you so much for your time. You are very welcome, and thanks for having me. When homemade is too good to keep at home. Helping Arkansas business do business. Making better happen with First Security. You'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas. Our 17 electric distribution cooperatives are working day and night to provide reliable, affordable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses just like yours. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners.